we do need to talk about this new look <laughs> because <laughs> it, no one has made in my generation this extreme of a switch. What would you call the genre? I said I wanted to start a new genre of music called gay pop. It's like K-pop, right? But it's yeah. gay pop. It used to be stars and rainbows and pink, and now it's black, it's still paint on her face. I was eight is when Miley had her bangers moment, and I was like, all I want is to have that one day. Like, I want that. <laughs> and then I got pitched this song, Karma, and first word is, and I was like, oh, it's a good song. I was like, but I can't say that. I can't say I'm a bad girl, I'm not. If I want my moment, this, this is my 180, this is my moment. I gotta ask you about the K-pop. Yes. A lot of people have come for you. Do yeah. you do you retract what you said? Have what? you have you? Why did people come for you for that? Literally, what did I say? I'm just going down and down. I gotta like bust it to get this music done, right? And like it or not, you're gonna look. People are not gonna like it. People are gonna be mad at me for sure. I'm scared. I'm actually scared to be in a room with the girl. Please do not send any hate or honestly comments of any kind to anyone mentioned in this video on behalf of me or yourself. The purpose of this video is to give my commentary and opinion on matters of public concern. Thank you. Welcome to BJ Investigates. We need to talk about JoJo Siwa. So if you're anything like me or anyone else who I even know, then you probably haven't been able to escape the constant barrage of JoJo Siwa content flooding your literally every device from every corner of the earth. This isn't even like the regular inescapable Jojo Siwa content that, you know, flooded the Targets and the Walmarts and the TJ Maxxes and things for years. I am talking about that. I'm talking about her attempted rebrand. We'll get into the dance moves later, but let's just say we've seen this before. Jojo Siwa is no stranger to controversy, considering she famously stuck by her canceled YouTuber friends, such as James Charles, Shane Dawson, <laughs> Colleen Ballinger, AKA Miranda Sings. Are you friends with Colleen Ballinger still? Yeah, I've known Colleen for, since I was, since I was 12. I mean, that alone is ringing alarm bells to me, but let's continue. Wasn't she also friends with Paris Hilton? Didn't she do stuff with her? Yeah, no, I'm just, mm -mm, I'm gonna call her Paris Handler. I'm blaming mm -hmm. her for what happened to Britney Spears. Partially. I mean, Lou Taylor has quite a bit of blame to bear. Now, you might also remember like a completely distant reality where Jojo Siwa was just an innocent, cute little girl getting basically bullied JoJo. by a giant lady on Dance Moms. You're not psycho enough. Did you watch the movie? Why? I can't believe you're doing a dance about a movie and you don't watch the movie. I explained it to her. I, I know, told her what it was Explaining about. something and seeing John Travolta drop pig's blood on Sissy Spacek is completely different. Or you could possibly also remember her from this weird home video that Kim Kardashian made with Northwest and JoJo. My mom says you scream a lot. Your mom said I scream a lot? I did not say that. I said you need to scream a lot like JoJo. You need to keep your volume up like her. Which now come to think of it, it actually seems a little bit more like it might just be like a initiation ritual of sorts. In any event, the girl has been here and there and everywhere. I mean, basically giving Trisha Paytas a run for her money. She's been a dancer. She's been on reality TV. She's been on Nickelodeon. She's been doing live performances from time to time. But her music career technically started all the way back in 2016. And it started out as a flop with a bang with some allegedly, supposedly anti-bullying pop song. Um, Probably not the intended audience, to be honest. But here's the song. I mean, we, we're not gonna be, really be able to play most clips and most stuff. I mean, Dan moms and Tyra Bank. I mean, there's certain <sighs> it's hard out here in these YouTube streets, but um, so the year after she started her alleged music career, you know, on the Nickelodeon stage, which is a Viacom property, which is <clears throat> the same as VH1 who does the VMAs. But anyway, I digress. She started out her career basically on the Kids' Choice Awards stage. And you know, Kids' Choice Awards, now that I mention it, that's who gave Dan Schneider that award, wasn't it, in 2014? So two years later than JoJo Siwa's on the stage. Well, just things to think about. That's why we do timelines here. Anyway, the next year, she was signed to Nickelodeon. And she wasn't signed like, oh, to Schneider's Bakery as an actress or something like that. No, she's going here, there, and everywhere, all over the Nickelodeon shows. It's not like, oh, JoJo Siwa's show. No, every show was her show. She was everywhere. Basically, she was like the Brian Peck of the new Brian Peck, pickle girl, except, you know, so far not all those allegations, you know, and it's until proven guilty. And it's actually Nickelodeon, the company that was responsible for launching all of those JoJo products all over the Walmarts and the Claire's and the every other thing. I had JoJo bows. I had rainbow one, I had pink glitter one, and I was adult. I had already graduated college when I had my JoJo bows, but I liked them. Maybe I'll start wearing bows again. I actually looked for one. I looked for one today. I might have, I might have gotten rid of the JoJo one, but they're, they were good. They were large. They were good. They were, I liked them. 
Yeah. And even this wasn't really without scandal because blink and you miss it. But apparently there was asbestos in some of jo in some of JoJo's makeup, and they have what they recalled it. What happened with it? The Food and Drug Administration, which is the regulator of cosmetics, did decide that JoJo's makeup had over the allowed amount of asbestos. Even the FDA. Think about that. Y'all, then the FDA had a tweet about it. And then they tweeted a little heart. We'll put it right here. Then, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to think that maybe Dan Schneider was a ghostwriter on JoJo's board game. Because they did make a board game called JoJo Juice. Which, to be completely fair, she used to wood drink like... Monster mixed with Surge mixed with Butane or something and she and it would make her go and she would call it Jojo Juice which was like even back then whenever I hadn't really understood what was going on with these reality shows and the kids and I still didn't really get the whole like how I get it today I thought that Jojo Juice was weird I'm studying for finals and I'm 22 years old I don't understand what they got this six-year-old drinking this for kind of thing I remember being like mm -mm, something's weird something's off oh here's a little card from the game what's it say have you ever walked in on someone naked or had someone walk in on you? Okay, here's the thing. Devil's advocate. I used to would be like, you know, at one point I was a little girl and we would like play little like have you ever's and stuff. But then this is this is not like little girls making up a game at a party. This is like grown people had to approve it all. And what's this other one say? Yeah. This is a grooming game. It's making little kids okay with talking about it with people or something. I'm making the executive decision right now. The game is canceled. It's recalled. FDA, where's my phone? I need my Barbie phone. I need to call the FDA. And now fast forward to today. She is participating in some questionable behaviors, twerking and grinding, looking like a clown, dressed up like a kiss clown, like she's going to a child's birthday party. I don't know if she's going to a dance recital competition for 12 year olds or if she's going to the, the mosh pit at the Ozzy Osbourne show, girl. I don't know what in the hell JoJo CY is dressed up for, but it can't be anything good. I have never seen anybody with this type of black eye stuff around their eyes up to any good. Never. It looks so unsettling. I all roads leads to clowns. There's a little kid right there, so I'm gonna cover my face. I have already every brick possible that I got none left in me. So not only does JoJo call this questionable and hideous look, the black beast look. Tell me about this look here. This look, this is my this is my karma black beast look. Got to bust it out of the vault today. It's got some rips in it, but you would never know. No, you'll no. I mean, how would you be able to tell? If you, you might be able to tell. You looked close enough, yeah. <laughs> But then she tries to gaslight us about it. Like, un we gotta get we gotta get back to the point. We have got to get back to the point as a society where we um call ugly shit ugly. We gotta get back to the point where we're like, nope, mm-mm, you took it too far. And that I mean, Jojo Siwa is a precious, beautiful human being. She's very cute. She's got a beautiful face. There's no question about that. What I'm talking about is the ugly ass choices that she made. And not only is she making these hideous choices, it's objectively ugly, it's ugly. She's like, oh no, it's just because y'all don't get it. People are afraid of things they don't know. People are, people are. People are not gonna like it. People are gonna be mad at me, for sure. Things can be scary for people. New things can be very, very scary. Um, like it or not, you're gonna look. See this, mm -mm, plain on our face. She's calling it the black beast look. She's not calling it the beautiful rainbow flower on a mermaid cloud look. The glitter sunshine rainbows look. She's calling it beast. And then plain in our face, like it's not ugly. It's ugly, you calling it a beast. Anyway, I'm not afraid of it. Although, is she trying to warn me? Should I have been? Should I be? Anyway, so she released her music video for this song last week called Karma. But for weeks leading up to this song, she's been posting little snippets. She's done a really great job, or her marketing team has, with getting sort of hype going on about the song before it ever did come out. And I remember the first time I heard a little trailer of it, it was good. I was like, okay, yeah, like it's a bot, like, all right. But there was no video to go along with it or something. You know, it was just the song. And I was like, okay, this is cute. This is nice. So she finally releases the song with the video last week. Like I said, her marketing team did a really great job. I mean, she was on the red carpet. She was getting interviewed by these actors that I don't know if they picked them up from the same school where uh, Boogie and Albert Minera Jr. went to school. I'm really not sure, but she was talking about she's going to be the first person to ever transition from child star. <laughs> I honestly think... You're an adult star. What is that? I honestly think Jojo Siwa um, is playing in our face. Like, I think she's saying stuff that's gonna make people aggravated on purpose to get us to talk about it. It's literally a troll clown. A clown troll. They got different types of clowns. That was a troll con. Playing in our face. So basically the streets are saying that this is just the latest antics in what had already started for Jojo in 2022 as her sort of tease into becoming an adult star or something. I don't, I don't, 
Adult star seems coded. There, there are people in my generation who have gone from child star to adult star. Streets are saying it all kind of started back in 2022 whenever JoJo did cut her hair really, really short. And maybe it was supposed to be a little bit more shocking and dramatic than it actually turned out being because I think she just kind of looks the same with short hair. And she also came out as a lesbian or gay or something. Was she bi or gay or? I'll put a clip in right here of JoJo Siwa describing her own sexuality because far be it for me. <laughs> I'm gay, at the time pansexual, bi, you know what I mean? Anyway, okay, so yeah, and that's not necessarily her transition into adult star. However, bringing up her sexuality in such a public way, in my opinion, does kind of make the public start to associate her with a romantic partner in general of any gender. I, I knew since I was little that I was never straight. I knew that and I, I, but I also was never like, oh, I'm gay and I. Which I do think allows for her to sort of mature in the public's eye in a way that, you know, they did it with Britney and Justin. Are you still a virgin? It's like uh, Miley and Lee. Like, she like she goes through them. Was running around with a gigantic. Jojo is nasty. Like the Jojo juice is nasty. I'm still kind of ruminating on it. No. <laughs> I gotta like bust a to get this music done, right? Did she say that on purpose? I gotta like bust a to get this music done, right? And I am obsessed with it. If JoJo Siwa was in my chair, screaming what her voice she got at me, I gotta like bust a A saying or a phrase like that, I might call the police. I might, call, I might seek protective orders. It's Sivo. Clowns. So after she cut her hair really short, she was in position where Nickelodeon essentially, I don't really exactly know why, rescinded her offer to go to the Kids' Choice Awards, which, you know, was only a couple years after she was the big highlight, so. A lot of you have been asking me why I'm not at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards tonight, and the answer is very simple. I wasn't invited. I'm not sure why, but I just, didn't get an invite. My conspiracy theory is that that was an orchestrated media push to publicly separate her from a children's network in order to further facilitate her transition into adult star, whatever in the hell that is supposed to be. But that's just a conspiracy theory. I don't know, I wasn't there. Oh, also she was nominated for like favorite TikToker or something. I mean, they didn't call it that. It was called something else, but it was basically like, you know, she was nominated for an award and she still didn't get to go. I mean, that's kind of like a little bit further support of my conspiracy theory, but I don't know, I wasn't there. Oh, and she lost to Dixie D'Amelio. Shocking. Who we haven't seen. Who might be with Shelly Miscavige, we don't know. What the heck? Um... Okay, so let's get back to the red carpet where she's wearing the Black Beast look. And just a few weeks prior to this, JoJo had made an unexpected announcement pretty much across social media that she was ready to start a family and she was got a sperm donor and... JoJo, I heard you on your podcast. <laughs> bully, bully. <laughs> really? I, have, I actually have two tattoos dedicated to him. Um, this one's dedicated to my baby girl. Her name is uh, Freddie. Then this is dedicated to twin boys, Eddie and Teddy. Um, <laughs> Freddie, Eddie and Teddy. Freddie, Eddie and Teddy. I got, I want awesome. three babies. I'm a sperm donor lined up. Again, more of this, in my opinion, just sort of PR push to make us associate her with more adult-like things instead of child-like things. But if she's gonna show up wearing the 12-year-old color guard outfit based on Ozzy and the rest of the people from Kiss or whatever, I mean, it's not gonna work. I'm just concerned. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to call CPS right now. Um, he, Wait, where's the sperm donor? You already donor? got it lined up. Is the sperm donor a friend? I will tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you. I make great I'll kids, I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I is he here friend. today? Maybe. <laughs> I, um, I, um, I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> oh, and then last year she pretended she was pregnant on Snapchat, which there's another post of her holding her belly on Snapchat and she has the caption written team boy or team girl. And she's smiling in bed, looks to be about, I don't know, three months pregnant. Clearly she was just puffing her stomach out. Is a horribly insensitive joke to make and to pretend as, which I mean, I was, I didn't see the pregnancy test. Maybe she was. The rumor that Jojo Siwa was expecting a baby began in June, 2020. What the hell? So she's 20, wait, what? Cause if she's, isn't she 20 now? So then wouldn't she be like a teenager that she shared with a test with a positive sign on it? Um, what about like COVID? A girl, I don't know. I wasn't there, but um, I saw this whole pregnancy baiting. If I did that, I would be canceled. I mean, if, if I took a photo, bloated as hell, beside a box of Pampers diapers and said, I'm expecting, I would be f Because isn't it like, uh, frowned upon since so many people have like trouble getting pregnant and stuff. Yes. But according to Yahoo in 2022, Jojo talked about adding prenatal vitamins into her routine because she felt like they made her hair look amazing. 
<laughs> this didn't seem to contribute to any pregnancy rumors though. So the song comes out and since the release of the song, she's actually been getting a lot of backlash. A lot of times it's kind of 50-50. Some people love her, she's polarizing, some people can't stand her, but it seems pretty unanimous that people are like, okay, fine, the song's fine. But JoJo's getting all kind of backlash. She's getting backlash for a lot of reasons. Karma's a Beep was originally written by Antonia Armado, Tim James, and Desmond Child, and was produced by Rock Mafia and DJ White Shadow. So unbeknownst to me until just a couple days ago, this song was actually already written 14 years ago. It was written back in 2010, and somebody else had already recorded it and made a whole music video and released it as their song already, exactly the same song. And another thing other than that person, they tried to already shill this song off to somebody. That That's what lets me know the song has the sauce. Something in this song is designed to do a certain thing. If I had a wish, I would have never messed around. And the fact that this song was offered, maybe you didn't know, at first to Miley Cyrus, and she actually recorded a demo of the song back in, what was 2011, 12? Yeah, I don't know, whenever Can't Be Tamed was. So back in the day, maybe 10, 15, 20, who knows? long time ago and Miley Cyrus actually recorded it but then I don't know I don't believe nothing they tell us but allegedly the reason that Miley didn't go forward with the song is because it was too mature because it was had the f word in it but she was out on stage with a weenie and with a film finger and bending over this was four years before her transition to that oh she wasn't ready to come out yet she was just in the bird cage no I haven't really followed her career like that I remember uh I remember Party in the USA I remember oh yeah that one was good. You know who Britt Smith looks like? Inessa Lee from the California Transhumanist Party, the director of ideology who's married to the founder of the California Transhumanist Party who wrote a book called like Equitable Libness or something. She did that, uh, that song also has the sauce. Um, and she looks just like this Brit Smith, like this like Ukrainian or like Russian or like something looking like supermodel just waking up out of the bed looking like that that's what Britt smith looks like i wonder if she's related to anessa lee from the california transhumanist party i don't know now from what i understand you actually recorded this song back in 2012 yes yeah back in 2012 so it's a shock to me you know she had a twin sister right Britt smith she's a twin and there used to be a duo and then they broke up a twin robot from the factory well the other one wanted to go to college they're from Connecticut. Both viable op- Twins from Connecticut. Anyway, um, oh God, the web keeps webbing. <sighs> because this Brit Smith person, never heard of her in my life till before this, she was signed to Interscope and Jive Records, which ties us right back to the Backstreet Boys, Lou Pearlman, Johnny Wright, Larry Rudolph, we're all back there again. Jive also links in with Usher, so then we got P. Diddy brought in, we got L.A. Reid brought in. It's just the web is webbing, but also at the same time, there's like one record company now. So of course it's all related. Also, yeah, like we mentioned, Timbaland wasn't even on the credits for the song, but he was in the music video, which is very strange. So anyway, this song already has a whole history and 14 years later, after it's already had its moment, it's being re-released by Jojo Siwa. It's almost like they're just telling us up front, like we don't bother picking people to be famous who can actually do anything themselves. But the thing about it is, and I will say, the best, most enjoyable part of the Karma music video is that dance break. I felt like I was in the cafeteria at the high school musical. Yeah. That's her zone. That's what she needs to be doing. She needs to be doing a dance yeah. something. The dance is given clown. It's given jester. Okay, so here's some of the criticisms. I'm just gonna read them off. People say, <laughs> I, I kind of like the dance because it's, I think it's the least offensive thing. Everything else is just so cringe. It is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> The dance moves look chaotic and odd, and she does this weird Peter Pan thing when she says the knife part. Yeah, that's the part. It's like, <laughs> what in the secret society hell that shit is about? So the song is allegedly, supposedly, too mature for JoJo Siwa, which I, I could see that criticism. I also disagree a little bit with it, but I mean, she has like 20 years old. She's probably been through some things in her life, and I'd rather her just come from that like authentic place of where she actually is in her life instead of this song that came out when she was six or something. <laughs> But it's also obvious that this was was their sort of coming out. They're like Britney Spears, Miley Cyrus, like turning into an adult moment. Honestly, I wanted to make art that made people go, what? Similar to Miley Cyrus bangers, Britney Spears slave for you. That for me was very important that I brought back 
crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Letting you're doing it. Look at you. And I do think it is interesting how they're doing it a little different now. It used to be like cover them in baby oil and get them in a basement with a bunch of dancers and that's they're coming out or whatever. And now it's or like, you know, get them on tape with Ray J. Kim, you're doing amazing, sweetie. Or something, you know. But um, it is obvious to me that it's a PR media push stunt to make her an adult in our eyes or something. It's all, it's all choreographed. It's all planned. And uh, the world's only seen a little teeny tiny bit of the plan. Yeah. So I'm excited for them to get to see more, see what the full vision is. Right. Because um, it really does paint a picture. All she's looking like is a clown. Adult or child. Clown. It's like a different species or something. It's not given relatable in any way. I'm scared. I'm actually scared to be in a room with the girl. Like if she was like, hey, I'd be like, whoo. Uh, <laughs> I might call I might call Van Margera to come like be reinforcement even like I because when you look at a person like that who don't clearly don't know what's acceptable to say I'm busting a, a, I can't even say it I gotta like bust it and she's screaming and you don't know what, what decibels are about to exit out of her and she's got all these moves it's like whoa girl <laughs> No, I might be held. I might be held captive on the phone for hours. I don't know. Just anything could happen, and I'm in not positive ways. Other criticisms that she's received is she's still holding back. It's not grown up enough because she said f instead of the full f word. Which shut up. It's like, oh, it's not depraved enough. More depravity. People are. I've heard people. I've heard people ask, oh, what if we had the the Roman Colosseum now? It would be so insane. Have y'all seen WrestleMania? People will be lined up for that Coliseum. Look at this. She needs to say If you're a bad girl, say it. Chill out. There is a lot of bad going on, y'all. You need JoJo Siwa dropping F-bombs in her first hit single. Please. So there's a couple other controversies associated with the song. First of all, she told somebody, maybe TMZ something, I don't know, somebody. She wanted to invent a new genre called gay pop. What would you call the genre? I said I wanted to start a new genre of music called gay pop. It's like K-pop, right? But it's yeah. gay pop. And I have a lot of people who would beg to disagree and throw Robin in the ring, at the very least, dancing on my own. I mean, the Gaga stands would probably claw somebody's eye out for saying that Gaga didn't invent gay pop. I mean, Robo Kid even. You trying to tell me JoJo Siwa about to invent gay? P I mean, listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but it's a controversy. People are like mad about it. And again, this goes back to my theory from earlier. I think she's just saying stuff to piss people off on purpose. I think it's just for fun. It's trolling. It's a clown trolling us for fun. Instead of the pie in the face, it's I'm going to invent gay pop, guys. Like it's a little girl Stevo. She's going to be on, wi on Wild Ride in that trailer soon. She's going to be on the mics with Stevo and his handler. <laughs> Imagine the fake laughs in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have no mouth and I must scream has nothing on being stuck for an eternity with Steve-O and Jojo's fake laugh. You have to be really deep in the lore to understand any of that. <laughs> this is a niche channel. Uh, what was the other thing? People are complaining and criticizing that, yeah, okay, maybe Jojo wants to have a coming of age moment, but the coming of age that they're doing here is just focusing on like sexiness instead of actual growing up, like actual maturity. Like any kid can bump and grind on a yacht or whatever, they shouldn't. But, um, you know, she's 20 years old and she's an all, she's at the all white yacht party right amidst the P Diddy investigation allegations, Christian Combs and all of that. I mean, she's at, she, the video starts off on an island and she's dressed as a clown. I have questions, where did the makeup come from? That's the only outfit, she, who dropped her off there? I mean, it's CGI, but I'm just like, I'm trying to understand it from the first moment. She's on an island and then she's on a yacht, white party. And then she's humping, bumping, grinding gyrating doing weird moves and it's like i do understand the criticism of saying that it emphasizes like sexualness over actual maturity because like i think about miley cyrus and I, I don't really love what she was doing either but her very first like out of the child factory song was like the climb like that's a coming of age song there's always gonna be another mountain and you're gonna have to overcome it and maturity that's cute like she wasn't humping people on a yacht and then the humping girl it's nasty so then there's this video from Billboard. JoJo says she's been working on the song since, working on the song Karma since she was 18, which is like two or three years ago. So about two years ago, after I recorded Karma for the first time, that's when the vision initially hit me. 
It already existed. I don't wish she was she training her vocals, probably, because she's been talking like this for 20 years. Like, I can't tolerate. Listen, she's on. it's unlistenable. It gets your cortisol through the roof. It also seems like she's addressing the criticism about the lyrics not matching her persona or being too risque. Because she's, like, literally saying here how she tried to rewrite the lyrics a bunch of times, but nothing was really hitting quite like I was a bad girl. So then we, uh, we did some versions of the song. You know, we did a version where it was, you were a bad girl. You did some bad things. And then we did, she was a bad girl. She did some bad things. She tried, like, she was a bad girl. They were Is she next in line for records? It's gonna be a bad girl. Bad girl records, bad girl entertainment, bad girl, bad girl house. Oh, she did? I was a bad they? They were a bad. And I was like, well, why are we making it specific to girls? They were a bad, okay, that doesn't work. Again, I'm no expert. I would never purport to talk for someone else, but I think saying they were a bad girl doesn't quite get where you need it to go. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what else? And then she wants to claim she wasn't a bad girl, but then it's also just bringing up like Ruby Frankie saying, I'm not a naughty girl, I'm a good girl, I don't do naughty things. Like, y'all are grown. Do you wanna be a grown up? Stop saying I'm a bad girl. I was 18 years old, I didn't wanna say bitch. I didn't wanna say I was a bad girl because I wasn't a bad girl. Mm. Also, she says her whole team, her choreographers and other people have been waiting for her first adult moment. And I don't know, just weird, just weird thing to say. In my opinion, maybe it's innocent, whatever, who knows. So the web keeps webbing because as we have now obviously established and determined on this channel, a lot of these people, a lot of these famous people that we know about today started out in kids groups, whether it be a boy band or, you know, the Mickey Mouse Club or all that or Amanda Show or whatever. They start out in a group and then one of the kids kind of becomes the standout and then they kind of break off. Well, Jojo Siwa, obviously, dance moms, and her and like a couple others sort of became A-list celebrities. I mean, that one that Sia has trapped in her basement or whoever, wherever she is. But in this particular case, it does seem like Jojo wants to throw in her hat into the three ring circus, into the ring as it were, because she had went in ahead and tried to start a girl band. And I actually saw her posting about this band on, if y'all could hear rain, sorry, it's literally storming outside. Thank you, mother nature, not much I could do. Um, She tried to start this girl group and then there's some allegations coming out from the girls in the group about long, you know, the typical, the typical thing so they wanted to come be joe so they wanted to come be jojo mm -mm. that's nasty something's wrong with these people i don't i don't know i don't know what's going on here some some report streets are saying jojo's mom was getting sad that she didn't have a toy to play with anymore because jojo was a grown-up so she needed some new toys. But this is exactly what I remember being told to me happened with Dance Moms. Abby Lee Miller was like, oh yeah, let's let's do an episode. Let's do one episode. And they had them sign these contracts and really they signed for two seasons. <laughs> so, I mean, in true Hollywood parents are idiots fashion, um, it does seem to be a little bit, he said, she said, on the whole situation because these people are like, we thought we were gonna go put our kids on making the band type show, which is what it is. And I don't know, I, it's like also stage moms, girl, I really don't know. But what I do find disturbing is after Jojo has seen everything she has seen, she wanted to be the inventor of a new girl kid band, but then maybe it was Jojo's mom after all. And that would explain how she created the Black Beast monster that she did. Anyway, um, stream squirrels are acting up by Goriana to combat the karma clowns. Love you, mean it, okay, bye. You need to look at the Pennywise pictures of Jojo Siwa. She was on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, she loved it. Yeah, just look at this. The video is private. <gasps> Didn't you just watch it? Look at this. Oh, wait, I have a vague memory of, okay. All roads leads to clowns. FBI, oh my God, look at this one. She's choking a child. I can't. Oh, what is this? Uh-uh, what is this? No, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Apparently also, I got Jojo juice and Go-Go juice confused with each other. I don't know, I think it's a Mandela effect. Comment below if you remember Jojo juice. Yeah. Really Used to be stars and rainbows and pink and lavender and turquoise. And now it's black, it's still paint on her face. And it's still her doing incredible dancing. All right. So I don't know if it's so much as a rebranding or just maturing, getting older, sh wanting to show another side of her. And this song is about, I guess, somebody hooked up with somebody else and 
It's going to come back to haunt you. Backtrack. And you should have kept my name out your mouth. 